Thomas, thanks for joining us for an academy update. Um, we're through now the under-16 and under-18 national carnivals. Can you give us an update on uh, on how we went from a, a Gold Coast Suns perspective? Yeah, look, a really good, um, I guess, review or a good story for Queensland football, both the under-18s and the under-16s uh, won the Div 2 titles um, at the Nationals. So they played uh, Northern Territory, Tasmania and New South Wales, ACT, uh, and performed really well. So... Um, a lot of uh, our Gold Coast Academy boys, uh, both from North Queensland and the Gold Coast region, got opportunities to play and, and, and get seen, I guess, uh, on a national stage where recruiters and everyone gets a good look at them. And then just to perform really well as a team uh, is an added bonus and, uh, and I guess uh, shows that Queensland footy is in a good position. And we had quite a few, quite a large contingency playing in both the under-16s and both under-18s. Can you tell us how many played in both and, and what the growth's been since you've been here at the club? Yeah, well look, the um, squads were nearly made up uh, in both 18s and 16s around 50%, which is kind of something that the Gold Coast, uh, or in, in my time, hasn't been uh, something we've been able to get to. So to get that uh, that share of the, the talent, I guess, in those groups is, is really good for us. Um, and look, some of those players that are playing in the 18s and 16s at the moment have been in the academy from, from its inception, which was uh, around four years ago when it first started. So they've had four years of really good development. Um, and look, not saying that it's the, the reason they're doing well, but it definitely helps the boys within Queensland uh, that they've had an extra development program as long as, long as their club footy, along with their club footy and rep footy, um, to get them to the next level. We're in mid-July now on the back nine of the season. Can you talk us through what the weekly program looks like for the academy at the moment? Yeah, it's sort of a, it's an exciting time. Things quiet down a little bit for state football. They've got one more, or well, the under-18 boys have got one more um, TAC Cup game where they play North Ballarat in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and then their state program finishes. Um, the, the really positive thing for our under-18 boys is that um, they don't necessarily fall into local football. They get an opportunity to play NEFL with the Suns. And um, we saw on the weekend against Southport that we played seven of our academy boys. Um, and look, by all reports, they, they did really well. The guys got over the line um, and it's been a real positive um, aspect of our program is that once they come out of the state program, um, they are continually um, tested and sometimes exposed and performed at the highest level that you can play within Queensland. And one of the important parts of your role and Aaron Rogers' role is the management of the lows of, you know, especially underage players. What Talk us through the consultation that goes between the Suns, um, the schools and the clubs, the local clubs. Yeah, it's huge. It really is. Because the Suns Academy don't necessarily, we don't play games. We're not a team that plays regularly week-to-week football. We, we have to, um, I guess learn to work with club footy, schools uh, and the state programs and then of course NEFL. So the consultation that uh, our head coach does, Aaron Rogers, with all of those guys um, is hugely important so that everyone understands where the players, um, I guess, development pathway is for the year um, and where their priorities lay. Um, and of course, you know, state football for Queensland is, is a huge uh, high priority for those boys. And then um, to be able to play regularly, regular needful football. And, and I think this weekend we play against Greater Western Sydney at Metricon. Um, there's no better place to test yourself uh, if, you're, um, if you're trying to get drafted at the end of this year against those guys. A lot of young, talented footballers out on the park. As you touched on just then, uh, state duties are coming to a close and on the weekend against Southport and the NEFL we had seven academy boys play where the minimum requirement is uh, is only three so that must be a good source of pride for the academy and, and the way we're going. Yeah look I think um, when you play, uh, when you've got a uh, low uh, listed players, amount of listed players, anything under 15, um, you get really tested by some of the NEFL teams, some of the strong ones. Um, so the priority or the, the rules are that we only need to play three academy players. Um, and uh, when we've done that uh, on numerous occasions throughout the year. Um, with all of our state under 18 players coming off the nationals in good form, um, we had the opportunity to play all seven um, with, with a couple um, going back to play senior football in the quaffle. So um, yeah, great, uh, uh, I guess, um, pat on the back for those boys that the, 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 the NEFL team was happy enough to play all seven of them out there. There's a few players that have drawn a bit of attention across the year. Can you give us a bit of an insight into Brad Shear? 
Yeah, so Brad, um, he's a bottom major at the moment, so he's got another uh, year of under 18s um, next year. He's been um, uh, injured and, and had to uh, uh, have a really slow, I guess, start to the season. He played a couple of games uh, with Palm Beach, then went into the Nationals and played um, two of the National games that, that were on offer. Uh, and he's developed really well. And, and he debuted on the weekend, I think, for his first game with the Suns. Um, and look, by all reports, once again, got out there, um, contested football was great, got a hold of the football, used it really well. And look, uh, he's, been, um, he's been excellent with his attitude over his, uh, to get over his injury and then to be able to come back into form. And Dyson Budrick and, and Max Spencer are the two other ones that have really generated a lot of interest. Yeah, look, those two have got some unique uh, um, stories, I guess. Dice has come through the um, academy program four or five years ago when it first started. Um, put himself on the map last year by playing senior football with Labrador as a bottom major. Um, he's extremely professional and is getting the absolute most out of his body um, and, uh, and plays really hard competitive football which a lot of coaches like um, so he's going to be uh, a, a draw, not a draw card a, a player that we'll see regularly in the NEFL uh, and Max St- Spencer another local boy from Palm Beach uh, Currumbum High actually um, came into the academy program late um, last year and uh, has just his improvement has excelled um, and which got him to a level where he played all of the state level football was an important member of that nationals uh, winning side uh, and also played his first NEFL game so all those guys I would say you'll see um, regularly throughout the rest of the year. And just lastly can you give us a bit of an insight into what occurs week to week with our academy I know they're in here a few days a week? Yeah, yeah. Look, so um, I guess the, the key for the academy is that we can use the facilities. We can use the, the, the PD or the, um, the intelligence that's around here. So we, we provide our academy boys two nights um, within Metricon Stadium. So on a Monday, we'll use the ice baths. Um, we'll use the computers for reviews. Um, we'll, we'll do individual edits um, and some uh, touch just so the boys are continually touch the football. Uh, then on a Tuesday night, we, we sort of call that our individual development night where they'll do their own weights programs. Um, they'll run through some rehab recovery if they, if they are a bit sore from the weekend. Uh, they'll meet up with our physios um, and then we'll have a, a light training session before they lead into their uh, main training session, which could be a state session on a Wednesday. It could be a Quaffle uh, Senior on a, on a Thursday or even a NEFL, um training session. So, yeah, we get, to, we get to look after them early in the week and then we let them go to, to whichever specific club they're playing at. Great. Thanks for your time, Taunts. No worries, mate. Cheers.